Coming up on Network Africa, at least three people die following heavy rainfall in Hagiza, the capital of the self-proclaimed Republic of Somaliland. Tanzania says over 200,000 Burundian refugees in the country have until October 1st to go home or be forced to leave. Malawi's government bans a three-day nationwide protest against the electoral body. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Amarachi Ubani. We begin today in Somalia's breakaway region of Somaliland, where at least three people have died and 18 more were injured following heavy rainfall in Hagiza, the capital of the self-proclaimed republic. The rain battered the capital on Tuesday and knocked down the roofs of several homes and other buildings. Some of the villagers also experienced power outage after electricity poles collapsed due to the heavy rain accompanied by strong winds. Somaliland, officially the Republic of Somalia, of, uh, officially the Republic of Somaliland, is a self-declared state internationally considered to be an autonomous region of Somalia. Now, in the Gambia, tributes are being paid to Dauda Jawara, the country's first president who died at the age of 95. The vet turned politician led his country to independence from the UK in 1965 first serving as Prime Minister. After the Gambia, one of Africa's smallest nations, became a republic in 1970, he was elected president, but in 1994 was overthrown by soldier Yahya Jameh, whose 22-year-old 22 22-year 22 rule was renowned for its human rights abuses. Serve and defend the Constitution, and that I will do right to all manner of people according to the law, without fear or favor, Dauda Kairaba Jawara is Gambia's first post-independence president who led the tiny West African country for 24 years before being deposed in a 1994 coup. A veterinarian by training, Jawara in 1959 founded the Protectorate People's Party, later rechristened the People's Progressive Party, which emerged as the dominant political force following independence from Britain in 1965 he served as Prime Minister from 1962 to 1970 as the newly independent Gambia, a sliver of land along the banks of the Gambia River and Atlantic coast surrounded by Senegal, remained a constitutional monarchy under Queen Elizabeth II. In 1970, Gambia adopted a republican constitution by referendum and Jawara was elected its first president. Over the next two decades, it presided over a multi-party political system in a region plagued by authoritarian rule and frequent civil unrest. He drew criticism in the later years for nepotism and corruption. That helped open the door to the military coup that unseated him and was initially welcomed by many Gambians, but his reputation had rose again since the removal of former president Yaya Jame. Let's get more now on the life and times of the former president, uh, former uh, uh, director general of uh, the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, and now DG of Bolitak Institute for Research and Strategic Studies, Professor Bola Akiterewa, joins us now on the program. Professor, always great to see you on any of our shows. Thanks for joining us. What would you say are the legacies of former president Dauda Jawara? Professor Akiterewa, can you hear me? We do seem to be having problems with the connection with Professor Akitera and we'll return to this conversation later. Tanzania's Interior Minister Kangi Lugola says over 200 Burundians, Burundian refugees who sought refuge in Tanzania have until October 1st to go home, although before to leave. The Burundians who fled political unrest in 2015 amid protests over President Pierre Nkurunziza is ultimately successful third-term bid and a subsequent failed coup 
Tanzania is party to the UN Refugee Convention, which prohibits the forceful return to countries that people have fled from. But Mr. Logola says the UN Refugee Agency had not respected the agreements made last year between Tanzania and Burundi to repatriate 2,000 refugees every week. African leaders and representatives of international organizations have gathered in Japan's Yokohama City for their latest Tokyo International Conference on African Development, TICAD. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe spoke at the conference and stressed the importance of addressing climate issues and the need for technological innovation. This is the seventh installment of TICAD and the first meeting since 2016 when it was held in Nairobi, Kenya. The meetings are led by Japan and co-organized by the United Nations, the United Nations Development Programme, the World Bank and the African Union Commission. Japan has a thing or two it wants to do together with Africa. One is to safeguard the Indo-Pacific, which connects Africa and Japan, with great care as an international public good permeated by the rule of law. Another is to make a meaningful contribution as a people that cherishes water and the sea to your Blue Economy Initiative. As we walk along together, what lies ahead of us is the, con is the reform of the United Nations Security Council, a common cause for Africa and Japan that still awaits a resolution. TICAD has played a critical role in focusing international dialogue on Africa built on the twin principles of African ownership and international partnership. Its partnerships have made important contribution to Africa's economic transformation through entrepreneurship and trade. And they have supported increased access to health services, education, water and sanitation, and helped promote peace and stability.